On the topic of building a barn with what you have, this is nothing new. Did you know that? I did really. Well, I'm sure you're gonna tell us all that. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to take credit for it, but this morning I was out at my in-laws house and they have a huge farm with a couple barns. I got some footage of it for you to look at. Now these things were built out of poles of like tree branches and small trees. That's what they made rafters and braces and collar ties. They didn't like have sawmill lumber for all of it. They just used whatever they had. They just needed a barn. They did. And we'll show some diagonal bracing. The old barn boards put on that a 45 that's on there. Uh, also, sometimes you have to expand or extend your barn to meet your needs. So they built a barn, right? And then they got something else like another tractor and they had a lean to that they added a lean to or maybe to store some rolls of hay or some bales of hay. And then say they got another tractor or another something, they just build another lean to onto the existing lean to. <laughs> and the barn continues to evolve to meet the needs of whoever owns it. So I just think it's kind of cool. I had a good time looking at those old barns and it was my inspiration to build my barn out of what I have. I want to point out our scaffolding setup and we haven't used these in a while so many of you may not have seen our wall walker hanging scaffolding that just hangs on the top plate and then it has an extension for your walk board that's a really cool thing in a situation where you have uneven ground or need to get up a little higher than you usually would need to get so uh, i got a few pictures of that for you guys to see but that's a, that's a pretty nice thing that we own also we got my man chase here it's summer break so that means um time to go to work with dad <laughs> and he's gonna be running red cam a little bit uh, what do you think of Uncle Jamie's mower shed so far? It's rustic looking. It's rustic looking. What else? It's pretty much all. <laughs> okay. Welcome back to Barn Build, day number four. Four. <laughs> all right, today we're putting the roof decking on top of these beautiful oak trusses that we made. We're ripping down a bunch of oak boards and straight edging them right now. That's going to be the surface of the roof. Now, now for the viewers, why not just slats? Well, you could do slats with a metal roof. That is the most common, especially like two for foot a on shed. Uh, we do want real wood, though, for the for the screws that holds the metal roofing on. Yeah. We want those to go into real wood, not like OSB or uh, particle board or right. whatever. All right. So, but what I want to do is actually be able to put like roofing underlayment on the whole thing. Yes. Because I want to dry it in. And we it, don't have the metal here today. It rained really hard yesterday. <laughs> and I was sad. I sat on my porch. I watched it pouring rain on my poor little barn and it, getting all wet. It did get wet. You can really tell. I didn't know what might happen because these boards are already butt tight. Yeah. And if they swell, I don't know where the swelling is going to go. I don't know if they're going to pop up. I don't know if it's going to try to spread all the right, building. So this is just the intro cut. All right. Sorry. <laughs> I got more to say Let about Jamie that. Talk. Thanks to AG1 by Athletic Greens for sponsoring this episode. And if you didn't know, these sponsors allow us to take the time to film what we're doing during our work day so that we can put it on YouTube for you to enjoy. I'm always looking for healthy habits to help fuel my adventures, whether it's at work or on my mountain bike or on my skis. So my wife and I have been using AG1 for about a year now. And the best benefit for me is just the extra energy I feel. And for me, it's kind of like if you drink coffee, that coffee feeling that just lasts throughout the day instead of just a few hours in the morning. With AG1, better nutrition is just made a lot simpler. It has 75 vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens in one convenient daily serving. This special blend of ingredients helps your body's nutritional needs and supports gut health, immunity, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. They've gone through 52 different versions of the AG1 product over the last decade based on the latest research to make it better and better and better. And most importantly though, it's very convenient to use. You just do one scoop or one travel pack in eight ounces of water one time a day and that's it. And it tastes good. In fact, it's the best tasting supplement of its kind. I can drink it, you can drink it and feel better. So if you're interested in trying out AG1 by Athletic Greens, go to athleticgreens.com slash Perkins Brothers and you'll get a year's supply of vitamin D plus five free travel packs with your first purchase. Again, Athletic Greens is gonna give my audience a year's supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with their first purchase. And you ought to check it out. And let's get back to work. Real quick story on the topic though. Uh, my dad built his house with one by six tongue and groove decking on top of beams. And that was gonna be the surface of the attic, like a storage area. And it rained overnight on the one by six decking that he had just put down. Yeah. The house grew in width by two inches. Wow. Because all those boards swelled up and spread yeah. two inches. Did he just leave it? 
I don't know if it ever went back or what. I don't know. The house is fine, but uh, I didn't want that to happen to my little barn. And if you didn't know, that's what the Egyptians used to use to split rocks with. Like giant rocks, right? They would drill holes with them, drive wedges, really dry wooden wedges, uh -huh. into there. They would beat them in and then pour water on them. And guess what? Expand. It could, you can split giant boulders with expanding wet wood. So it's no joke. It's got an immense amount of strength. <laughs> We're putting this roof decking on. I just wanted to point out how much difference the wall and roof sheathing makes on our normal builds. So we have this thing like braced up pretty well, diagonal braced and still, right, get, can you see that? I don't know, but I'm shaking. <laughs> <laughs> so even at that, we can still wiggle this thing all around. So continuous diagonal bracing is what your wall sheathing and roof sheathing does, which makes a modern wood frame house really strong. We're immediately into a layout issue. This should be the center of our truss, the edge of this. And that means all these need to go that way to make them plumb, but we can't budge these things. They're really solid. So Jamie's rigging up a chain to something. What are you going to your truck? I'm thinking maybe a tree. A tree, and we're gonna keep tension on these till we get the decking on. Well, because if I have to leave in a minute and I forget that it's tied to the building, I might take off and just pull this whole thing down. <laughs> That'd make a great show. <laughs> Jason, if Jason was here, he could do this by himself, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Look at that. You lassoed you it. Lasso that thing on there. It's called the revolver. There's a lot of truck bed covers available out there. It's hard to pick one. This is the key to success today. All right. Okay. Let's see, is that gonna hook? Nope. Maybe this will hook on that hook. Oh yeah. I'm feeling good about that. Here we go, guys. The one thing I'll tell you is that we're gonna run the risk of just pulling the entire building over because it's not sheathed on the walls. And it's still kind of, you know. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna be watching out for. We may think we're pulling the trusses plumb. In reality, we're just, just yanking the whole building that way. Yeah, my son just said the captain goes down with the ship. <laughs> I guess we're the captains. I guess. On the so. ship? That's not happening. Here we go, guys. Uh, All right, slack is pulled out. All right, now give it a little, give it a little pull. All right, okay. Is the whole building moving? Um, it's the hard trusses to, are. The trusses are. It's hard to say right now what's moving. Between our cable and just pulling this rafter over, you can see now we've got it centered up like it's supposed to be. And Jamie's going to check the wall. See if we pulled the whole building or not. No, it's good. It's good. Okay. Good. We'll keep going. Either yeah. this one's sagging down or the wall behind it is, is up. Um, it's, it's just tiniest. Tiny, tiny. I want to check up here. Uh, that one's showing low. This one is showing low, so I don't know what it is exactly, but the one dead center to me is, is showing low. You can see my header on this six foot door only has two flat two by fours. Now, given they are thicker than two inches each. It's like four and a quarter total. I'm not sure if it's sagging or, or maybe the way we built it, it was swagging down. I'm gonna check it. And if it is sagging at all, what I'm going to do is put a jack in here, push up a little bit of pressure, and then I'm going to put diagonal, uh, like a little truss. A little bracing. A little truss. And that's what they would have done in the old times if they didn't have big, heavy timbers for headers. They would actually put in diagonal braces like a modern truss, and that would make it stiff. Cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's the stuff right there.
Right here. All right, let's do it right here. All right, yeah, 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 ready? All right, good catch. Pull it this way a little bit. Wow! All right, if you guys watched the Ray J channel, you saw this, and I thought it was a joke. I thought you ate the pickles, and no, then dude. we're like, oh, pickle juice started in $2.99. This is But real. no, it's Pick really for sale right there. Pickle juice, $2.99. Pickles, $3.99. Wow, the pickles are only worth a dollar. <laughs> what? Man, now I see why you go home and stare at her bike. <laughs> I just want to stare at it. Look at that yep. thing. Yep. Give us some specs. What's it got? Uh, Hope brakes. Uh, I-9 hubs. Industry 9. Yeah. Carbon rims. What? Cro-Mag seat, Cro-Mag bars, I-9 stem. Keep going. I, I'm just I like don't having want a great to. Right it now. makes me sick. <laughs> Carbon cranks. What? Yeah. Where are the well. pegs that I'm going wheels? Do you do tricks on? Look at Chase's face. He's like, I'm so sad I don't have this bike. I'm sad too. That thing is awesome. Da Did Vinci. you sell your other one? I got somebody who's wanting to come look at it today. You know, this is a lot of work processing this wood. Um, I really can't imagine doing it for a, like a full size house. And no. we've got pretty good tools too. And we're set up right here. So, like the old timers that did this with. I don't know, like hand tools? Oh, Stuff man. like that? <laughs> ah. Unimaginable. This is pretty eye-opening compared to just going down and, and getting a stack of 500 studs or like 25 sheets of I mean, zip roof and throwing it up there. A four by eight sheet of plywood. I mean, look, that's like maybe five two, sheets. two and a half pieces on this side, yeah. you know? Yeah, and then we're, we're processing material for like hours. Look at Jono, he's been ripping boards the entire time we've been here. Straight ripping them. By the way, this this long track saw straight rip jig, most of what we're doing would not be possible without that thing. True. And uh, so like I said, I mean, we got everything we need and it's still just like, sucks, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Looks pretty shady. Looks pretty shady? Yep. Super shady? Super. What do you think, oak or zip board? What's your favorite? Uh, zip. <laughs> We're just checking out the overhang here and you'll notice there's no framing like supporting the overhang. No, it's really nice this design with these oak boards. They're so stiff they can stick out almost two feet. Yeah. And we're just going to put one board underneath the bottom flat way, though. Not like on edge, like a rafter, but like this flat. Just to kind of tie them all together. Yeah, because all the ends are just kind of up or down. It'll get them all nice and straight. And then, hey, the drip edge is going to cover the end of the boards. And it's good to go. I wouldn't say, though, it was less work than just using uh, regular framing <sighs> and sheathing no. at all. No, but it does look cool. Yeah, I like I'm it. I'm happy about that. I've been back and forth about whether or not I'm going to put any windows in this thing you know, for lighting. I am going to put a light in it eventually, but I do think it needs venting. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to get hot in there. Yeah. And these little triangle things left in our trusses are like the perfect little triangle vent thing. Yeah. So we had gable some vent. Uh, gable vent. We had some roll screen material left over from a job and uh, it's here and it's free. I'm going to staple it up right here and put some trim around it just to cover the edges of the stapling. And boom, we got some nice vents. I think it's going to stay cool all summer. And cold all winter. It is going to be cold all winter. <laughs> you know what I could do? I could cut some pieces of foam board that fit the shape and put it in. You'll never do that. No, I won't.
Ray's got a couple cool specialty guns we're using now. They're staplers. That one's really a sheathing stapler. Shoots, shoots 7 16 by 2 inch staples. And then that one's a narrow crown. And what is that? 5 30 seconds? Uh, I think it's 7 30 seconds. 7 30 seconds. Narrow crown, 1 inch. And we're using the 1 inch ones for these little pieces. We're using the 2 inch uh, top and bottom for these. I don't know what you call them, fascia boards. Oh yeah. Uh, not really a fascia board, but it's just gonna hold, you know, the edge of all these boards aligned together. Yeah, I think you need to come out a little bit. You you got a couple of these sticking long by a little. Okay. Wanna go and do a roofing underlayment now? Yeah, because it could rain today. Like any minute, actually. Yeah, we should we should do it. Okay. Let's... Roofing underlayment, also a leftover from uh, the farmhouse. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Grace, ice and water shield, it's supposed to stick. It's pretty hot out here. It's I pretty think. hot, so I think it will in a minute. All right, pull it out uh, to the end But it's, it's about a year and a half old, so I don't know. So let's just go with uh, this row right there. Okay. So yep. we can see what we're doing. This stuff is the Ice and Water Shield HT, which stands for high temperature, because we're gonna put a metal roof on it, it can get hotter than shingles, so that's a good thing. We're out of this. What What else you got? I think I got that Raptor paper. Raptor paper, okay. Ray's got Ice and Water, or Ray's got Bitethane. I, do I don't think that'll be good to walk on. All right, what do you think about the Raptor paper? Well, it's okay. I think it's better than your regular just, uh, you know, felt, like, like roofing, car paper. Yeah, roofing felt. Yeah. Um, it's a little cheaper than the titanium paper. Yeah. But I don't think it has a, as good a walking surface. And from what I remember, it's it tended to just wear out a little quicker if, like, you yeah. had some stonework getting installed up on a chimney on the roof or something. This just seemed to, like, wear out. If you're going to cover it up quick, I think it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Significant yeah, there's a wide the range of prices on this stuff. So yeah. we haven't used any of it in a long time because we've been using the zip system, roof sheathing, and the zip tape, which I think is the easiest and fastest. So yeah, me too. That's why this is just laying around. But yeah, Raptor. Oh wow! Shit. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, almost all this roofing underlayment is going to say no staples. But we're shooting <laughs> staples with a button cap. I think they probably mean don't shoot it with just staples don't just use a stapler and the reason is it will tear loose right and you'll slide off the roof potentially you could so i don't know if this is really approved in their instructions but i feel good about it we've done it in a lot of cases um it's way faster than hand nailing with the button caps oh yeah hand, you know we haven't done that in a long time whoa oh. where did you come from <laughs> wow look how cool you look <laughs> Four feet even. We'll lap over that side too. So one, we'll shut up about the Raptor paper, but one last good thing about it is it's four feet wide, like a full 48, which is wider than most of your roofing and underlayment. So you cover a lot more. You have to do less rows of the stuff, which is great. It is nice. It is nice. Dog hair everywhere. Hope you enjoyed the video. I think there's gonna be two more videos and we're gonna wrap up this shed with a cool metal ramp and barn doors that we built in the shop. If you've enjoyed today's video, please remember to get subscribed, give us a thumbs up, that does help out. Thanks for building with us and we'll see you on the next one.